Chapter 8 Temperature This video is brought to you by Ace with Dennis. Now, learning can be smart, not hard. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell notification button to stop missing out free lessons from me. Temperature Temperature is a measure of the hotness or coldness of an object. The SI unit for temperature is Kelvin K. However, degree Celsius is more commonly used unit. Later part will discuss why is this so. Now, let's talk about absolute zero temperature, zero K. What does it mean? It means there is no thermal, thermal energy at all. Particles does, ha, does not have energy to vibrate. There is no temperature lower than this value. Hence, temperature measured in unit Kelvin represents the amount of thermal energy in an object. The more the thermal energy, the higher the temperature. Therefore, unit Kelvin is more the most appropriate unit to use to measure temperature. Temperature is a scalar quantity. Temperature measured in degrees Celsius uses freezing point and boiling point of water as reference. When the water freezes, the temperature is 0 degrees Celsius. When the water boils, temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. The reason why degree Celsius is more commonly used is because it is easier to understand. It will be very cold if the temperature is below 0 degrees Celsius compared to 273 Kelvin. It will be very hot if temperature is above 100 degrees Celsius compared to 375 Kelvin. Both scales are alike. It means one degree Celsius change in temperature is equivalent to one Kelvin change. Therefore, if you want to convert the unit from degree Celsius to Kelvin, we just need to plus with 273. On the opposite, if we want to convert from Kelvin to degree Celsius, we just need to minus 273. For example, negative 12.5 degrees Celsius equals negative 12.5 plus 273, which will give us 260.5 Kelvin. For 12.5 degrees Celsius, it will be 12.5 plus 273 equals 285.5 Kelvin. On the other hand, 12.5 Kelvin equals 12.5 minus 273, which will give us 260.5 degrees Celsius. For 525 Kelvin, it is 525 minus 273, which will give us 252 degrees Celsius. Now, let's look at the graphs for both degrees Celsius and Kelvin. When it is at absolute zero temperature, the degree Celsius is at the value of two, negative 273, while for Kelvin, it is at zero. So, the point, when the temperature increases to zero degree Celsius, for Kelvin, it is 273 Kelvin. So, this is the freezing point of water. When it increases to 100 degree Celsius, the Kelvin will be 375 sorry 373 kelvin which is the boiling point of water temperature scale physical properties in some substances that vary linear, linearly with temperature are called thermometric properties for example volume of liquid length of an object pressure of a gas at constant volume, voltage generated by two metals coupling each other. We utilize these thermometric properties to define a temperature scale and measure temperature. In order to establish a temperature scale, 
We need two reference points, the lower fixed point and the upper fixed point, for calibration. Ice point, 0 degrees Celsius, is the temperature where pure water freezes at one atmosphere. It is used as the lower fixed point. Steam point, 100 degrees Celsius, is the temperature where pure water boils at one atmosphere. It is used as the upper fixed point. We divide 100 equal intervals between these two points where each interval represents 1 degree Celsius of temperature change. This is the graph of temperature, thermometric property versus temperature. When it is at 0 degree Celsius, the thermometric property is x0. When it is at 100 degree Celsius, the thermometric property is x100. When it is theta degree Celsius, the thermometric property is x theta. Therefore, we can form the equation x100 minus x0 over 100 minus 0 equals x theta minus x0 over theta minus 0. We can make theta the subject. Becomes theta equals x theta minus x0 over x100 minus x0 times 100. We can use this formula to determine the unknown temperature. Lower fixed point does not have to be 0 degree Celsius. It can be theta 1 with corresponding thermometric property x1. The upper fixed point does not have to be 100 degree Celsius as well. It can be theta 2 with corresponding thermometric property x2. In more generic case, x2 minus x1 over theta 2 minus theta 1 equals x theta minus x1 over theta minus theta 1. When you make theta the subject, it becomes x theta minus x1 over x2 minus x1 times theta 2 minus theta 1 plus theta 1. Where theta 1 is lower fixed point and theta 2 is the upper fixed point. Liquid in glass thermometer. Thermometer is an apparatus used to measure temperature of an object. Liquid in glass thermometer is the most commonly used thermometer. Thermometric property that it utilizes is the change of volume of a liquid at fixed mass with temperature. Two types of liquid commonly used in liquid in glass thermometer, which is mercury and alcohol. So this is the comparison between mercury and alcohol. The freezing point of mercury is negative 39 degrees Celsius and the boiling point is 357 degrees Celsius. For alcohol, the freezing point is negative 115 degrees Celsius and the boiling point is 78 degrees Celsius. Mercury does not wet the tube, while alcohol wet the tube. Mercury is opaque and it is easy to read. Alcohol is colorless and it needs to be dyed. Mercury is poisonous and alcohol is safe liquid. Mercury is expensive while alcohol is cheap. Mercury conducts heat well and it responds fast to temperature changes. Alcohol responds more slowly than mercury. Therefore, we should consider the strength and the weaknesses for both liquid before we decide which liquid to use in designing the liquid in glass thermometer. The structure of liquid in glass thermometer. So this is the basic structure where we have the scale here and this is the stem. Inside there is a thin capillary ball and mercury or alcohol is filled in the capillary ball. At the bottom is called the bar. Here we have two parameters need to consider in a liquid in glass thermometer. First, sensitivity and second, precision. Sensitivity is the amount of time needed for the thermometer to show correct temperature. It can be increased by Reducing the thickness of the bulb wall to allow faster heat transfer. Or reducing the volume of liquid so that 
the liquid can be heated up or cooled down faster. Precision is the smallest possible temperature difference measured by the thermometer. It can be increased by reducing the diameter of the capillary ball so that the change in length per unit temperature becomes greater. Increasing the volume of liquid to allow more amount of liquid expanding per unit change in temperature. Now, let's talk about thermocouple thermometer. There are two junctions in thermocouple thermometer. Each junction joins two different metals. One junction is kept at a constant temperature, another junction is exposed to unknown temperature that needs to be measured. When there is a difference of temperature between the two junctions, a small amount of electromotive force or EMF is generated. This EMF is detected by a millivoltmeter. The amount of voltage generated epsilon varies linearly, linearly with the temperature difference at the two junctions. This is the graph of the EMF generated versus the change in temperature in thermocouple thermometer. When the change of temperature is zero, the epsilon is zero. When the change in temperature is 100 degrees Celsius, the EMF is epsilon 100. The unknown temperature change is theta and the corresponding EMF generated is epsilon theta. Therefore, we can get the equation epsilon 100 minus epsilon 0 over 100 minus 0 equals epsilon theta minus epsilon 0 over theta minus 0. When we make theta the subject, then it becomes theta equals epsilon theta over epsilon 100 times 100. So this is the formula we can use to find the unknown temperature for thermocouple thermometer. However, as we mentioned previously, the upper fixed point doesn't have to be 100 and the lower fixed point doesn't have to be 0. In more generic case, it can be eta1 as the lower fixed point and its corresponding epsilon is epsilon1. And the upper fixed point theta2 with its corresponding EMF generated epsilon2. And we have the unknown temperature theta with the corresponding EMF epsilon theta. Therefore, from this graph, we can get the equation epsilon2 minus epsilon1 over theta2 minus theta1 equals epsilon theta minus epsilon1 over theta minus theta1. And we make theta the subject. It becomes theta equals bracket epsilon theta minus epsilon1 close bracket open bracket theta2 minus theta1 close bracket over epsilon2 minus epsilon1 plus theta1. We can use this formula to determine the unknown temperature. Let's compare liquid in glass thermometer and thermocouple thermometer. The strengths of liquid glass thermometer are 1. Low cost or cheap. 2. It is easy to use. No calibration is needed. The weaknesses of liquid in glass of thermometer is 1. It can be broken easily and it need to handle with care because it is made from glass. 2. It is low sensitivity and precision compared to thermocouple thermometer. 3. It does not allow remote measurement. 4. It is difficult to operate in rough environment. The strength of the thermometer thermocouple are 1. Robust 2. High sensitivity and precision 3. Allow remote measurement 4. Can operate in rough environment While the weaknesses of thermocouple thermometer are expensive and need to be calibrated first before measurement. If you want to memorize 
you just need to see that the strength of liquid and glass thermometer is the weaknesses of thermocouple thermometer and the strengths of thermocouple thermometer are the weaknesses of liquid and glass thermometer. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Do you have any question or doubts to ask? Feel free to write down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Do you like this video? Please don't forget to like it and share it. Alternatively, you can also enroll this full revision course at Udemy. At Udemy, you can track your learning more effectively, download my notes in printable PDF form, take a summative quiz at the end of each chapter, get your first hand updated contents from me, get quicker response from me, and many more. You can get all these benefits at a very affordable price. It is one-time payment, no recurring fees, no hidden cost. This saves you thousands of dollars on expensive tuition fees and revision crash courses. And most importantly, your precious time. Finally, you can do your revision anytime you like, anywhere you prefer. All is available within your fingertips. Check out the description below this video and click on the enrollment link to register the course at discounted price. Alright, until then, see you in the next video. Have a great day ahead.